Friends, this is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to part two of Infinity Card and Beyond. In part one, you learned how to use your scan and cut to cut out the panels for our Infinity Card. We used the Sweet Stockings Designer Series paper. Since then, I've decorated part of an Infinity Card, and I wanted to save these panels here for when we use in the next part when I show you how to stamp and cut out the basic white cardstock. So we're going to be stamping on those two panels. But this is what you should have so far. You learned a lot of tips and tricks like measuring the different panels and creating rectangles. Then I taught you about the auto layout feature, which, it, which allows you to put a lot of items on one page and, and uh, use the, your, your designer series paper more efficiently. I talked about pattern interval and how to get small spaces between cutting panels. I also talked about something called background scanning, and that's how we got the dog to be completely centered. I was even going to put his tail over here to connect it, but you know what? I thought it looked better with the little lights. So this series is about casing something. I'm not, re I'm not doing this all from scratch. It's not, I'm not taking credit for any of these projects. They, I'm not reinventing the wheel, right? I am using projects that I had as part of my swaps. So this one here was created by Jill. She is Jill of Saipan Stamper, meaning the Island of Saipan. So I, I'm casing her card. Oops, did I do it upside down? Oh, it doesn't matter, right? It's an infinity card. So I'm casing her card that I got during one of my swaps. And then in this series, I thought it'd be fun to case a couple different types of infinity cards. So I'm casing this, and then I'm going to case this one. After we're done casing this in a few parts, and I show you how to make these, I'm going to show you how to case one that was made by a Guam stamper, Catalia, of Catalia's Creations. She has a Facebook page. So... Actually, they both have Facebook pages. So we'll be doing a different size infinity card in this series. So we're going to do, th like, I'm only on part two now. So this, this series will go on. Maybe it'll go on for infinity and beyond. Maybe I'll find some other measurements and case a third card, right? But the difference is, what, with what I'm doing, is we're using our scan and cut. We're going to be doing it different than when you see people do it with a paper trimmer. I mean, I'll explain how to do it with a paper trimmer. But we, we have scan and cut. So we can actually make more cards more efficiently, more accurately, than others who try to use paper trimmers and go, why is my card wonky? Why is it not folding correctly? Right? They're asking themselves all these questions. Well, we have, we're, gonna, we're not going to be asking ourselves those questions because we're going to have exact measurements. So let me show you where I'm going. Now, this is what I just did for my template, but you're going to make one. I, I don't give you my template. I make you learn how to make your own template from scratch. So here's what we're doing. We're able to put on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock two sets of card, enough pieces for two sets of infinity cards. So that's, that's, and we still have leftovers for, you know, tag treats, for other things, you know, other leftover pieces of cardstock, okay? So what I did is I took, let me just, I'm just, I'm going to erase my, erase my pattern now. So what I did is I took a piece of, just so you know what's loaded, this is Evening Evergreen, because it, it coordinates with the Sweet Stockings Designer Series paper. Where did I get 12 by 12 cardstock by stamping up? We don't sell all the colors in 12 by 12. I think we used to. Maybe we do. I don't know. Somebody who, I think Yvonne's on here. I saw some of my team on here. Do we sell others? I think we just sell in colors and white with 12 by 12. But you, but you could also do a white card base if you don't have the in color 12 by 12. I think we might sell Bright's collection 12 by 12 and other collections, but I'm not sure. But these, this is where I'm getting it from. I got the 12 by 12 cardstock. In colors by Stampin' Up, Evening Evergreen. You want to use Stampin' Up cardstock or really good cardstock, meaning this this can't be your cheapo, old cheapo cardstock from Michaels. You have to use really thick, heavy cardstock when you're making infinity cards. So I have a 12 by 12 piece loaded. But of course, if you only have 8.5 by 11 cardstock, I can show you later how you would have been able to use that to make one card. Or actually, I'm sorry, two cards? Let me think for a second. We might be making... You need four panels per card. All right. We'll get to that in a minute. My brain is my brain is sort of like, okay, well, let's do this math here. All right, so we're going to start by going to pattern. And we're going to take, you're going to learn more tips and tricks in this video, such as creating a line to divide a pattern. So let's do that first. Let's do that part first. We're going we're gonna to click here, and we're going to just get a square. And to turn any square into a rectangle, you just take this, you click this button, which means that you can change the height and the width independently of each other. So the first thing you want to do is make a rectangle that's five and a half, right, wide. 
So if you're thinking, I have an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, that's true. You could, you, you could use your paper trimmer, you know, cause that's going to be half of your, half of your width. And I can show you later how to use the paper trimmer for this. Not, not how to use it, but how you would, I can give you the measurements so you would use your paper trimmer if you don't have a scan and cut. Cause I don't want anybody to feel excluded if you don't have a scan and cut. You can still do this infinity card and beyond series with me. And you're just going to be doing a lot more cutting yourself. So now that we have, let's see, the length. Actually, let's do this. Let's make the width. I mean, we're just going to go the other way just for a second. We're going to make the, we're going to make the height 4.25. Just it's easier for me to see a long line, vertical, uh, a horizontal line. It doesn't matter here. We're going to do 4.25, okay, by five and a half. It doesn't matter because we would have just divided it a different way, but this is the way I did it earlier. I want to make sure I did it the same way I did earlier. So what you have is your length, like right, this is your length, even though it says width. When you do length times width, that's the way, I, that's the way I'm giving it to you in your, in my little, what do you call it? It's the little tags I made you later. Okay, I made you little tags later. So I want to make sure that you can follow this later. So anyway, so we have five, four and a quarter by five, so we really need this to be divided, right? And let's just go ahead and set this on the map for a second. We need this rectangle to be divided in half. So you're saying, well, why don't you just create two? Why don't you just create two rectangles? And they would have been divided in half. The problem is, the, this is the problem. When you try to divide, let me just go back to this shape for a second. Object edit. Here's this. Here's the size. When you try to divide 0.25 on the right here in half, you're going to get, you would, you would technically get 2.125, right? So you, you would, you'd go out to three decimal points. This doesn't go out to three decimal points, right? So when you have, if you try to divide it, if you try to divide this in half using the scan and cut and make two small rectangles, you really can't get the, if you try to do 2.125, it rounds up to 2.13 and then you end up with like, a measurement that's not exact and then you can't fold your card so I have a better way okay good thank you Eileen Eileen awesome thank you you can find 12 by 12 card stock on page 126 of the annual catalog thank you Eileen so I'm glad we do sell other colors now I'm happy because I wasn't sure if it was just in colors all right so let's do this with that said and, and I'll explain this better when I show you a visual piece of a piece of card stock but let's we're gonna divide this in half and then we'll get the measurement that we need exactly so you might not know this. This is definitely a new tip and trick. I don't think I've shown this on my channel. You might not know that inside, if you go to add pattern, you can actually create a cutting line. If you go into this borders, you can get a cutting line and a cutting line will help you divide something in half on your machine. We've done this loads of times in my scan and cut tutorials and my Udemy courses online. We have divided, we've done things like that, but I don't know if I've shown you how to do it right on your machine. You can scroll all the way down through the borders, like manually like this, or you can just jump right to the end using this fast forward button and I'm in the border section once again just so you, you know where to find it you can find score lines like these dash lines zigzag lines but you can find solid line bo-b001 is a solid line you're going to use that solid line to divide something exactly in half when you need to divide something in half when you can only get out to two decimal points right we're actually going to just pick a five and a half inch line five and a half inch line let me do, let me do that part first See how the, the machine only goes to two decimal points. Okay, and so does the canvas workspace. So you, you have to use this method of dividing by you're creating a cutting line through your rectangle. So let's see what I mean. There's your cutting line, right? We're gonna put that line, that line there. We're gonna move it. We're gonna divide this rectangle. See this rectangle? In half, exactly, using this line. But we're not gonna try to do this with my stylus. We're gonna use the tools available to us in this machine. We're going to go to edit and we're going to use the selection. The selection is going to let us select both objects. So first select both objects. They're going to turn red when we just say we want to select all the objects on the screen. And then we're going to use the alignment tool. So now that both are selected, we're going to go in here to object edit again. Actually, is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. You can go to this one. It's right back there. Just see, it's not object edit. It's just this one with the four arrows going up and down. And we want to go into this little button here that lets us align. 
I've used this button before many times on my channel. And what we want to align is we want this to be aligned vertically. See, so that the line is exactly inside the shape. And we want this to be aligned horizontally. Okay, so now we have a five and a half inch line. Okay, and it's dividing a five and a half inch rectangle. So we are left with, let me go ahead and go to object edit. I want to object edit this, go to object edit, and you want to group this. Okay, when you group it, you can move these two independently. All right, so now I need to show you, I always have to teach you, I always just show you for a reason. I want to teach you why you did something. This is going to really solidify why you did it. So because I tried to do it the other way, I was like, oh, I'll just make my rectangles for my card. I'm just going to go ahead and add one for a second. I'm going to get rid of it, but I'm going to add a rectangle and I'm going to try to do it the way that, you know, you should do it. So like it's five and a, let me get it like this. It's five and a half wide, right? That part's no problem because two decimal points, 5.5, .5, no problem. Okay. Let me just go right there, there. Now, our height, we want it to be 2.2 2 and an eighth, right? So 2 and an eighth, so let's say. So say we tried to do 2 and an eighth ourselves, and if you want to know how to do 2 and an eighth, you would take an eight and divide it by 100, and you'd come up with 2 or, you know, 2.125. Well, you can't put 2.125 in there. See, look, you can't. 2.125 is 1 and 8. It rounds up to 2.13. You think that doesn't make a difference? It totally makes a difference. Because this is not the same. Let me go back here. This is not the same. This this is a little bit it's a little bit too big and it won't it doesn't divide a rectangle in half. So I just wanted to teach you that. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And it's now that we've divided this, we can do we can do work wonders because our cards are going to be exactly the way we need it. Now, we don't need to worry about the other shapes for this reason. We just, we're making this one shape, which is a rectangle divided in half. But we don't need to worry about this one here. These next shapes we're going to add, we can just add them because we're going to click on this. And we're going to add them the regular way because they are, let's see, four. These ones don't need an eighth of an inch. These are going to be 4.25. I'm going to do the width first. I'm going to do the width is 4.25. I'm doing this one first because I always do it. I do it sort of length in my head here. 4.25. And they are going to be 2.75 high. And later, I do plan on making a tutorial of this like visually as, as well in a PDF format because I know it's a lot of measurements. See, I don't have to worry about making these exact because 2.75 by 4.25, they are exact because we have two decimal points on our scan and cut. All right, so with that said, we're going to need, now that we have, we have one rectangle that was cut in half with a line, and we have one shape that we made manually. We're going to need four of those, right? And we need two of those, because really it's going to be four shapes. So we can use this, we can go into edit, and we can say object edit, and we can make two of these, two of these, right? Which is really four shapes, because we're, it's just a rectangle with a line cut through it. And we need four of these. We're going to click on one, two, three, and we need four of those. Okay? So we're not going to manually try to move these around to make them fit efficiently on our mat. We're going to use the auto layout. So click on OK, click on OK, and this is the auto layout feature. The auto layout feature can turn these any which way it wants. We're going to use the first option, auto layout. We used this in the last tutorial. It can turn the shapes any which way it wants because it's going to give us the most efficient way to put these on the mat. And that's what it came up with, and we're fine with that. We're going to click OK, click OK, and we're going to cut. And we can save that template and use it again. It's going to cut cardstock. It's, if you're using a scan and cut CM machine, you want to use a blade depth of 5 for cutting Stampin' Up! cardstock. 3 for designer series paper, right? But when you're cutting cardstock itself, you want to use a blade depth of 5. But I'm using an auto blade, right? So I don't have to worry about blade depth. See, it's using the auto blade. So while that's cutting, See, it cut a line through that rectangle. I can say hello, and then I can come back and talk about measurements too. All right, so hello, Yvonne, and thank you for looking that up for me. Hello, Diane. Hello, Eileen. I'm sorry, no, that was Eileen who looked that up for me. Thank you, Eileen. 
Hello Melody, Janet P, Tracy L, Nola, and then you have your notes. Okay, so here's what I did, and it might not, so you saw it one way on the scan and cut. Hi, Katie. So this is what you just had. Like, this is what I just did. It may look a little different on the scan and cut, but say you're doing it on cardstock, like say you're cutting it out of cardstock or, or either way, right? This is what I just did, but I just did it a little bit differently on the scan and cut because, again, we can't get those eighth of an inch, eighth, eighth of an inch. Okay, but if you're doing it on cardstock, these are your measurements. So I, I made those labels for you. So look, look how precise these are, right? No wonkiness needed. No wonkiness. Is that awesome or what? So, although it just, oops, I must have done something. How did I do that? It's supposed to be five and a half. Let's see. I might have to just do this again. Oh, look at me. I say no wonkiness. I must have just given you the wrong measurements up there. Let's see if these did it right. Okay, good. At least we can do these right. We'll have to make those other ones again. I don't know what I was thinking. Because I was wondering why when I made a half an inch line that it um, it overlapped a little. We're just going to make that one part again. And see where I possibly went wrong. But see, this is, this is a... Hmm. It's okay. Reinforcements. We're doing reinforcements. So we're going to go back here and let's see where I went wrong. Edit. I must have done something wrong here. 5.5. .5, 5 wide. Hmm. Interesting. 5 and a half wide. How did it not... That's just so strange to me. I did 5 and a half wide, and that's this is 5 and a half wide. All right, let's get my paper trimmer. Let's see what. Let's see if possibly these ones I did earlier are not five and a half wide. Could that be it? No, these should be. Those are five and a half. Okay. I was just got. I'm. They're five point two five for some reason. But you saw these are five point. It's just the strangest thing. If anybody knows how that happened, maybe my line. Oh my goodness. We're gonna just start. We're just gonna do this again. We're gonna go pattern. Da, da, da. I'm just going to do this quickly. Five and a half wide. I'm wondering if my line wasn't the right size or something. Five and a half wide. And then I did it, uh, let's see. So four and a quarter. I don't know how it didn't come out five and a half. That's just the strangest thing. That's okay. We're going to just do it. Do it, do it, do it. All right, see, that's five and a half, and we're going to add that line, add a pattern, go here, get our, go to the bottom, get ourselves a line, okay, make the line five and a half wide. I think what happened is I didn't make my line five and a half wide last time, but we'll see. Okay, make a line five and a half wide. We're going to go to object edit, we're going to go into edit. Or, sorry, we're going to select all first. We're going to select everything. Select everything on the screen. We're going to go edit these. Line them up vertically, horizontally. And we're going to group them. Object edit group. And I'm going to now cut it again in my... Luckily, I have a lot of evening evergreen cardstock. Oh, thank you. So, you. so I did change the input. Thank you. Somebody's paying attention. So I did... I was like, how in the world did that happen? All right, so... Let's, let's here, we're just going to do this real quick. I'm just cutting one of these because I have to teach you the next part of the tutorial. We're going to click here, click cut, and start. I was like, where in the world? Okay, so it's doing it. So it's doing it. Oh, thank you, Deanne Davies. Okay, so she's saying, I said five and a half on the, but the screenshot that she took said I typed in, even though I kept saying five and a half, I actually typed in 4.25. Okay, thank you, because I was like, but these are the ones I did earlier, and this is pale papaya, and I'm like, how is it not matching my pale papaya? And I was just like bragging about how exact we are with our scan and cut. Okay, perfect, perfect. Do you see what I mean? So this is, when I make mistakes, they don't get flustered. You just got to keep on moving. This is why I made my own, myself a template. I made myself a template for this exact reason. All right, so those were, these didn't get messed up. These ones were right, the, the, you know, the ones I made earlier, so... 
These ones were right. These ones were, were not, but now they are. Okay, so we have two that are, so now we have, so what you need now is you're going to take four pieces. We're making the infinity card part. We're not doing the cardstock part. I mean, the, uh, we're just doing the cardstock part. You're taking the, these pieces, one of these, one of these from before. Now you have enough from your, well, unless you mess up like me, you have enough to make two cards out of the piece of cardstock you just cut. That's the plan, right? You have enough to make two cards. So we'll leave those there for a minute. Yeah, you can use a repeat lesson. We'll do a repeat lesson. I mean, at some point, we'll do it. Well, I mean, not a repeat lesson. We'll just give you the measurements again. But don't worry. So, maybe next time I can start out with this part. I can just start out with that part. But then I can do the white, the Whisper White cardstock, too. So what you're going to do is, oops, let's use our paper trimmer. You don't really have to use a paper trimmer, but if you want to get a sixteenth of an inch, the, the scorey board, the Simply Scoreboard, doesn't really do sixteenths of an inch. So I said to use paper trimmers for this, for these measurements. Okay, so let's do, we're going to take this one and we're going to score at one and three eighths. So one eight, two eighths, three eighths. So I'm taking these long ones and I'm scoring at one and three eighths. And when I say one and three eighths, I mean one and three eighths on both sides. Okay, one, two, three eighths. Okay. So now what you want to do is you got your one and three eighths and you want to take it, turn it over and you want to go like this and make sure that it touches. Okay. And when it touches, it's perfect. You, you did it perfectly. I'm taking the score, my bone folder out of my pocket and I'm just going to go like that with my bone folder. And then you want to turn it over and do that again. Okay. Because this is going to have to be flexible. Flexible. It's going to have to bend on both sides. Okay, now let's do the... So we're going to do that to all those pieces. So we'll go ahead and now we're going to do this. We do that four times. Okay, let's do... I mean, not four times. We do this. Well, yeah, we would do it one, two, and you do it to the next piece. We'll do the next piece faster in a minute, but let me do this one. So we're going to score this one. And see, this is why I made myself a template. I've used, I got an eyelash stuck in there. I used my own template over and over as I was making my own cards, right? right? Okay, so I use my own template. So one and one sixteenths of an inch. This is divided in sixteenths of an inch. This simply, this uh, trimmer. And I'm just using the scoring part of my trimmer. So that's one and one sixteenth. All right, so now we're going to just turn that over. I always turn it over because the faint side is up. Now we're going to go like that. Make sure it touches. When it touches perfectly, now if you if you had tried to use the scan and cut and you didn't and you round it up, if you tried to do this on the scan and cut, this one, this one here, an eighth of an inch, two point one two five, you you don't have the three decimal points, and that's why it didn't work. I tried it earlier. Trust me, this one has to be. You have to use the method of taking a rectangle and dividing the rectangle in half. That's see, I made one rectangle and divided it in half to get these two exact pieces. And I just don't like using a trimmer. Number one, I don't like using a trimmer. Number two, I like things to be exact. And then I can like mass produce these. So, so you're going to have two pieces of each. So I hope this part is not confusing, this part here. I'm just go ahead and I'm going to do some more scoring. I'm just looking at this. So I was doing, this is like, I'm calling this length times width, even though in the scan and cut, don't get confused because in the scan and cut, you have to put, it's, it's called height first and then width. This will be height and width in, when you're in the scan and cut. But when I'm not in the scan and cut and you're just talking about, you know, using measurements, it goes length times width. That's why I wrote it like that. One and three eighths. One eighths, two eighths, three eighths. Okay, score. Turn it around. One eighths, two eighths, three eighths. Score. And I, you notice I'm not pushing very hard on the scoring tool. The reason I'm not is because what if I mess up? I don't want to push too hard. I'm going to flip it over. I want to make sure that it matches, that it matches up. See how it matches up? 
before I push too hard <laughs> on the scoring tool, I want to make sure that I can, you know, burnish the edges and everything. So you, you want it to like match up, but, oh, but not overlap. So it does get, you know, if it gets a little wonky, that's what your bone folder is going to help you do. It's going to help you make your little pieces so that they, so that they aren't wonky. And then you're going to turn them over and do that again. All right. So we got two, let's see, one, two going different directions. We got three panels and we need our fourth panel. We need this, another one of these. Right, let's make sure, just making sure. I hope this is making sense. We're just, it'll make sense as I put the card together. Yes, Rhonda, figure it out. Thank you, Rhonda. Everyone's telling me what I did. <laughs> everyone's like, you said five and a half, but then now everyone's telling me how many times I messed up. <laughs> We're going to have to just do this again. We're going to have to do Infinity Card and Beyond Part 2B. Or maybe I'll just do all of Part 2 again. Maybe we'll do all of Part 2 again. But I kind of like when I mess up. I mean, I'm not saying I'd mess up on purpose, but I like, I like when I mess up and fix it and show you that it's like it's only paper. So maybe I'll just do Infinity Card and Beyond Part 3. We'll just, we'll just go on and we'll move on. And at the beginning of the next, the ne the beginning of the next tutorial, I'll just go over these rectangles again on the screen. But then I'm going to still do the basic white and the stamping because we need to move on. I think we'll, you know, we'll, we're just, it's like you make a mistake, like who cares? It's only paper is my point. Okay. Oops. Let's get this one here. One and one sixteenth. This is this piece here. One and one sixteenth inch. It's really like no big deal. Like, I, you know, I'm going to use those other pieces of paper that I messed up earlier, like for bookmarks or whatever, you know, tags, uh, die cutting, uh, card elements. Like, I have so much paper, it's unbelievable. So, it's like, I'm not even worried about it. But I was wondering when I made that five and a half inch line earlier, I was like, why is my line five and a half inches and it's not matching my rectangle? I was wondering. But then I'm like, oh, maybe I'm just, my eyes are messed up or something. So I was like wondering. I should have noticed it when I did it. Okay, I'm turning this over. See, I'm just turning it over. That one was a little too faint, but... There you go. One and one sixteenth inch. Okay. And now we got that. We we'll flip it around. All right. So for this next part, you can use any adhesive that you like. But I mean, I personally don't like using glue for this next part. I'm going to use tear and tape, or you could use your stamp and seal plus. Right for this next part. The reason is you don't want to use glue because glue could ooze out. Okay. You know, like if you put glue on this, they could it could ooze out the sides. So here's what you want. You want something like this, right? And then you want these are going to be on top of there. So let's let's take these two pieces and we're going to put the tear and tape on the tops and the bottom. But it can be tear and tape or it can be. Ha <laughs> ha. Thank you, Brenda, for the super chat. Thank you. Brenda, that was so sweet. She's like, buy buy another piece of paper so people can stop stressing over it. Yeah, I'm not the one stressing, but I'm gonna buy more. I'm actually I would use tear and tape, but I'm only using this because of the time involved. But what I'm saying is this is the best thing to use for this. It's called tear and tape. So next time, next video. When the video is not, not as long because I'm going to be doing, well, it might be long, but what I'm saying is due to time, I'm using Seal Plus, which is strong. But typically you would use tear and tape for something like this, this kind of project. So what you want to do is put some tear and tape up in the corners, but don't get in this region. Don't get in the bottom half region. You want to put it up in the corner region. Some people say to draw a line and all this BS. And I just like, I mean, now you can draw lines, but I try to make my life easy. And I don't want to, you could draw a line in the middle, put a little dot. But I just kind of eyeball it, and I think that's fine. All right, so we're putting, so what you're doing is you're putting tear and tape at the bottom and the top. So you're putting it on all four corners. Or tear and tape, or like I said, it can be glue. You can use glue. And by the way, if you don't know what a super chat is, that was Brenda's. She just gave me a donation, which is hilarious. Thank you so much. I'm going to use buy another piece of cardstock. She said, do it again, do it again. No, it wasn't that I'm stressing over the cardstock. I'm, I, don't, I don't want to make my tutorial like hours and hours long. 
right? I don't want you to think this card is hard because it's really not a hard card. Really, that's my that's my issue with it. So I, I'll do it again in Excel. So what you want to do is now I'm going to, I'm just using this paper trimmer as a way of like keeping everything straight is all. So you're going to put this piece of paper down, right? Just do one at a time because you put the adhesive in the corners and you're going to take, it doesn't matter which way you take this, but you're going to use the corner. I mean, use this to help you align the corner, right? That's all I'm using my paper trimmer for. In other words, I got it a perfect corner, right? Perfect corner there. And then um, sometimes I just turn my, because I'm right-handed, I just turn the whole thing like, like I'm turning it that way. Does this make, I hope this makes sense. I'm just using, I'm just taking one of these pieces now and attaching it. I'm taking a long piece, I'm attaching it. I'm using the corner to keep it from getting wonky. Okay. Good. And now I'm going to take this bottom piece and I'm just, you know, it would have been like this, right? The bottom piece, but I'm, I'm turning it like that only because, right? I need to use the corners of my trimmer where you can see that. So I'm now I'm just putting that piece up there. And there's, there's loads and loads of tutorials I followed that have other people have showed, showed you like with different ways to do this. So I, I encourage you to really, really wrap your head around infinity cards to watch not just my tutorial, but others as well. And then I just put that piece there. But it's got a little wonky, and it should have stayed up in the corner more. I should have used the corner for that one. But don't even try to... You can try to pull these apart, but I don't know. You better do it quick, because this stuff dries. Once this seal plus dries, it's like concrete. You can't get it undone. But for good measure, just because I want this to be in the corner, I'm going to put a little bit tiny more up there in the corner, because I pulled it off. There we go. So now... The magic happens. Okay, watch the magic. Watch the magic. We're going to, let's say, let's say this is the beginning of our card because I like to make that the beginning of my card. Although it's an infinity card, I like to start out with this cute little panel. So let's start out like that and let's test our card. So we're going to go like this. Right? And then we're going to open it. Right? Like that. And then we're going to, and of course I should have burnished the edges. We'll do that in a minute. But first I got to just show you that it works. And then I can show you about burnishing the edges. See, isn't that cool? And it just keeps on unfolding. So let's now burnish, burnish meaning. Okay, so here's the beginning of the card. This one looks fine. This one's fine. So then you're going to open it up the first time. And you see how it's a little puffy. It's a little puffy. So you get your, your bone folder. Or you can use your scan and cut spatula. And you want to do that. You just want to train it to go both directions, right? It's a little puffy. So that was the one fold. That would be panel two, whatever. And this would be panel three, right? It's a little puffy. So we're going to kind of do that. You want to just train all your paper so it doesn't get so puffy. Turn it around. Train your paper. Once you keep on folding it a bunch of times, which you will inevitably while you're decorating it, you know, you'll have no problems. See, I think that's good. Yeah, certainly a lot easier than you thought. I'm sorry if I confused you over the measurements, but I mean, this is, it's easy now that you see it. So now I need to show you the, my cardstock information. So like, because you're going to see, oh, I could have just done this. So let's just talk about, I'm using the scan and cut and I'm going to keep using the scan and cut, but some of you might not have a scan and cut. So I need to just show you this part. So this here is my one I did in pale papaya and this one I'm, I did in evening evergreen. So what I'm going to do is take a piece of white cardstock. I'm going to put that down for a second. And then I could show you the one I'm working on with the pill. So here's the piece of cardstock. Okay, so follow along with where I'm going with this. Here you go. You can make your panels. Okay, you can make enough for two cards using a piece of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Okay, and that's why I gave you these that's the exact reason I gave you these measurements. So you can just use your paper trimmer. If you don't want to use your scan and cut and you can just do what I'm showing you here. Look, one, two, three, four. Here, let me move this up. I hope this is making sense. One, two, three, four of those panels, right? Here, one, two, three, four of those panels. That's all you got to do. Take an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and just use my measurements. And you can just do that. So you don't need to worry about all the stuff I showed you with the scan and cut. Just use your paper trimmer. Okay, here's another one I'm working on with this called, I'm still using Evening Evergreen. 
and I'm working on this one. It's called Painted Christmas, but it, this is why I was experimenting with my measurements. Last video, I taught you about these measurements, which are, I think are perfect for the panels. This is when I cut my panels a little short, but I'm still going with this infinity card. I'm still liking the infinity card. It's just that my panels were shorter while I was experimenting. Okay, so you, you see what I mean? You can just really showcase your designer series paper when you make when you make these. So I will be making, and then here's the one I made, you know, just with the, I'm going to be making one maybe using a hand pen designer series paper, which will go with my pale papaya, or maybe pattern party would be a good one. I know that has one of the colors in it. So I'll be making this card. I'll be making this one, Sweet Stockings, with you guys, because I'm going to start next time with the cardstock tricks I just showed you. Uh, next video. Then I'm going to show you how to do the two panels here for that we're going to stamp. We're going to be doing some stamping. And we're going to be, we'll end up with something like Jill's card with these panels. And you can, it's up to you whether you want these to be, like how you want these to be. Okay, so like here. So it's how you want them, you don't, you could stand them up so that they face up at this one point. But other times there might be, things might be upside down. I mean, it's really up to you how you want to lay out your panels, but I consider each one, what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm going to say this is a panel and we're going to decorate it and everything will go one way. Then we're going to open it up and we're going to decorate it, right? Decorate another panel. So it's just, it's an infinity card. So it's just, it, yeah, I know whoever came up with this is, is genius. So then the other thing I wanted to mention is your bucket of crafty goodness. You want to start getting that ready. And I did, I did another tutorial on how to cut out pattern paper with the scan and cut. So whether I get to this part again or not, just have some of these ready for, for the next one. Have some of these ready. Let me put that there. So that you, that you can easily, when we, because next time we're going to do the part where you're going to just cut out the panels in basic white cardstock and we're going to do some stamping and decorate our card and finish this card. But I want you to have these already made. And I've already made like extra panels. So I'll probably do a bunch of extra cards, you know, before the next video. So that's all for now. And... I hope you enjoyed this and didn't get too confused and thank you for coming and I will uh, we're gonna miss a paper share Brenda Brenda I've done a paper share uh, go ahead and use the video link Brenda in the description of this video you can do yeah paper share now so yeah you didn't miss it I still have it but I am moving I mean I'm gonna be uh, yeah don't want to explain all that right now but it's like if you don't do it soon then it's going to be like, you're going to have to wait till my stuff come, catches up with me in the mail. I have to mail my stuff somewhere and then kind of do the share from there. But I, I'd rather I'd rather mail it off sooner than later. So go ahead and do that if you like. Um, yeah, Janet's saying, whoever came up with this is brilliant. Yeah, Tina, I'm still, I would have a PDF, but I still have to, my Udemy students, some of them get mad at me because I do video courses and then they, they keep asking for PDFs. So I really have to give them a couple PDFs first. I dread doing actually paper PDFs. I don't dread them like, as in, I can't do them. I just dread them. I'd rather do videos. But yes, I will do a PDF eventually. I know I need to. I was doing these things just to give you some something for now, to give you the measurements for now. And um, I wrote down the measurements last time for the for these little panels. So you know, go ahead and check that out. So thank you all for thank you, Rhonda and Deanne and Nola and all you guys who gave me measurements and explained what was going on in the chat and. Tammy, yeah, that's a great tip for using the trimmer to line up your papers. Yeah, use, okay, Tammy likes that tip. So every, you can either use your trimmer to line up your papers or you want to use the corner of your Simply Scored. Use, use this before you do your gluing because it's very, it has to be very exact, these corners, when you line up those corners together. And again, if you can use glue, but think about glue. If you use glue instead of what I showed you, the tear and tape or this, you're going to, it could ooze out. And if it ooze out, if it oozes out, then you get stuck on this panel and you can't do the bending. The panels will get stuck together and you can't bend the card correctly. So glue could ooze out. So definitely use the tear and tape or the other. And if you want to use your paper trimmer to score at the 3 8 inch mark, that's fine. But the paper trimmer doesn't do 16 of an inch scoring. So I just wanted to mention that as, be as I go. I'm going to be going now. It only does 8 inch scoring. So to do it a, a, a 16th of an inch score, you're going to have to go halfway between one of these lines. That's very hard to line up a halfway between these score lines. It's very difficult to line up a half. So I just feel like I don't even want to go there. I'm not using this for my scoring of these infinity cards. I'm using 
the simple the paper trimmer because the paper trimmer has 16th inch marks okay well have a great day everybody go ahead and do your homework your homework is to make some of these card bases using your scan and cut and so you, when you come back and and to make all your panels and to make your bucket of crafty goodness and when you come back all you have left is your panels that we're going to be making out of basic white and although i'll review this again you're going to make the panels out of basic white we're going to stamp them we're going to put our card together and we're going to be done part three at the end of part three you're going to have a full infinity card with sweet stockings and then we're going to move on in part four what i plan for part four is to start making the panels for this card so we're going to make this card here that's part four and that'll take us a couple videos to get part you know this this bigger card made all right that's all for now this is the paper chef thank you for joining me today